Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When Hashem created the world, He didn't want man to leave the world the way it was or the way it is when a, a man is born. He put us in the world to make the world a better place. And that's why when we improve on the world, we become partners to Hashem in the creation. We become his partner. Because he didn't, he didn't make it a complete world. He left work for us to do to complete the world. And certainly as the generations passed, and in the world there became more darkness and even chaos, so it's up to man to bring light and to, and to rebuild the world into a better world. And the climax will be when Mashiach comes. But Mashiach's coming is dependent on our work during this time that we are here before Mashiach. In order for man to shed light to the darkness that's in the world, Hashem gave man light. He gave man the light of Hashem. And like we learned in the, in the, the first half of chapter 18, that that the light of the Ein Sof is enclosed in that part in the nefesh in the soul of man and specifically in the Pchina of Chochma and with that he is able to make change in the world and to bring light where there was previously darkness and to bring order where previously there was chaos. Now we are in, in the, the second half of chapter 18. And now we're going to get into the details of specifically where, which place in man's nefesh, which place in man's nesham, in his soul, over there, where over there does the shine, the light of Hashem, is the presence of, of, of godliness in man. Which part of his soul? Now it is understood that we're connecting two different dimensions. Some uh, dimension of godliness from up on high and the dimension of God's creation, the neshama, down here. So to make a connection, you have to make a bridge. And that is through the highest level of the neshama, the highest nefesh level of the soul, over there it connects to the light of Hashem that lowers itself but to shine in man. And now man, who is the prime of creation of this planet, of the universe, now man is able to build the world with the instrument, which is the, the light that Hashem shined in him. So now we're going to elaborate, now in the second half of chapter 18, we're going to elaborate on this point. We're going to elaborate on exactly what is it about the nature of Pchines Chochma, the highest level in man. Now, he says that it is in the Pchin of Chochma. Chochma literally means wisdom. And it's not speaking here only about human wisdom. We're talking about the wisdom that's in the soul. We're talking specifically about the wisdom that's in the godly soul, the Nishama, that's the godly soul, which is part of Hashem. And just like in Hashem, there are ten sefiris. So to in man, there are ten qualities that reflect the ten sephiris that are in Hashem. And the highest level is wisdom. There are three qualities, Chabad, of, that are intellectual, and then there's seven, emotional. 
And in the three qualities of intellectual, there's wisdom. So it's the top. Since it's the highest, that's where the Eid and Sof shines. So let's analyze this Pchinas Chochmah. The Hebrew word for wisdom over here is Chochmah. But actually it's much deeper than that. So let's start. Hine ha-chochmah, hi mokr ha-sechel va-avana. Wisdom is the source of intelligence and understanding. This p'chinas chochmah is where our intelligence comes from. V'hi l'mayla mehabina. It's higher than the second level, the second intellectual level, which is understanding. So it starts with chochmah, which is loosely translated as wisdom, and understanding is already developing the idea. The creative mind comes up with the idea, which sometimes is called the flash, that some people even sense when the initial idea goes into their head, or even with a math problem, and when they feel the solution, so they have a question, and they're in darkness, and they're looking for a solution to this question. So there's suddenly a flash in their head. That flash, where does that flash come from? That is a beginning of Chochmah. And is the source for their understanding. So after you have the flash, you have to develop the idea, p- 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 uh, prove the idea if it's in math. Then you have to prove and the steps that it takes to prove uh, your solution to this mathematical question. And... Uh, if it's any other type of idea, you have to develop it and present it and sort of say, make a paper out of it. That is Bida. But Chochmah itself, the root of Chochmah, of this, what we call wisdom, is really higher than understanding and to be able to grasp. It's a source, but it's really higher. So let me elaborate on this idea. What it comes out from here, and it's developed more in other works of Hasidus, in the Amorim of all the generations of Hasidus, that in Chochmah, there are two levels. There is Chochmah, which is that which we can sense, which actually we can sense in our brain. And that is when we have a problem, and then we feel the sensation of that flash in our mind, like sometimes the cartoonist will draw a light bulb going on, which in that way they're illustrating the sensation that all of us feel when we feel that flash in our mind that is the beginning of the solution to the problem that we are trying to solve. And then you have to develop the flash. So that's Chochmah. That's the first beginning, the seed for developing the idea, which later will be developed in Bina. But that is a level of wisdom that really can be developed. And it could be sensed. And it's something that we grasp, at least in a flash. But where does the flash come from? That's what Hasidus was looking at. The the flash we sense. But something made that flash. That means there's something deeper inside which is the source of that flash. What they call in in, in the Hasidus the Barak HaMavrik. The flash of lightning of an idea. The chassidus they use not a, a light bulb, but a flash of lightning. So in your mind you have a flash of lightning. The flash of lightning again is the lower level of chokhmah. The higher level of chokhmah is deeper in the person's neshama, which is beyond any grasp, which is beyond any sensation. And that is where, where, where what we would call the light, the source of light. Because Seichel is really light. 
It's a light. We also use it even in English. We use terms when we're talking about understanding or not understanding ideas or situations. We use the term in English, I'm in the dark about this. Why are you saying you're in the dark? Why are you using the word I'm in the dark? We're in the dark, I'm in the dark. If you don't know information, you're in the dark. Darkness is when you turn off the light. It's darkness, you put on a light, it's light. Darkness is at night. And then when the sun rises, it's no longer darkness, there's light. But why are you using the term, I'm in the dark about this? And then when you understand something, you say it's clear. Some people use, use the word, it's clear as daylight. You ever heard that expression? Mm -hmm. I'm so sure about it, it's so clear to me like daylight. What is clear? What is it? Uh, something that's not clear, if the water is not clean, it's not clear. So I can't see the bottom of the pool. So then the water is not clear. Water is clear when it's clean. When water is not clean, it's not clear. How can an idea be clear? Clarity. And that's because, and this is probably in all languages, and in Hebrew and Chassidus, this is called Oyr HaSeichel, the light of Seichel. And that is a quality deep in the Neshama, in the Nefesh. It's a human quality, so it doesn't necessarily have to be in the Jewish soul, in the Neshama, so it's in the nefesh, but in the Jewish soul, the nefesh alakis, it's, it's, it's also in the godly soul. There's the wisdom of the godly soul that he speaks about in the second chapter of Tanya. <clears throat> so there is that part of Chachmah that is the sen what we sense, the, the flash of lightning. And then there's deeper than that, the source of that, that's the light source of wisdom. And that is what he's saying here, that in that higher level, which is beyond human grasp, which we cannot even sense, which is the source of the flash of lightning, over there, that is the highest level of Chochmah, over there, there shines the light of the Ein Saf. Over there Hashem planted his light. So in the place of the light of wisdom, the light of wisdom, of Chochmah, that is the place where Hashem placed the godly light, the light of the Ein Saf, and that gives man a potential to light up the darkness of the world with the light of Hashem. And that is the source of that hidden love that all of us have within ourselves, the Ava Musateris, that he started speaking about in the beginning of chapter 18. So let's develop the idea. V'zeo l'ashen chokma koyachma. The word chokma, if we turn around the first two letters, could read koyachma. Koyach is a power, it is a quality of a something. It's a koyach of a something. It's something, what does it mean when we say chokhmah is koyachma? It's a something that you can't grasp. So if you're talking about an intellectual idea, so when you're talking about the first lightning flash of the idea, in that beginning you don't grasp it yet. Because it's not developed. So that is one way. That's the lower chachma. That's the koyachma. The something in the lower level. I got it. I got it. What do you get? Wait a minute. Let me think it through. Because at that point, you, didn't, you don't actually grasp it even in, in your mind. Then certainly the higher level of chachma, the light, which is the source of the flash, it's a koyachma that's totally intangible. 
It's something that is not yet capable of being grasped. The lochin, and therefore, mislabish boy in sabbaruchu, and therefore, in this highest level of human qualities, over there, in that light of wisdom, is enclosed the light of Hashem, the oyin sov, the infinite light of the inf- of Hashem. Who is infinite? The less machshavat klal, which in that light, which is the, the wisdom of Hashem, so to say, it is impossible to grasp. And since we have that planted in us, and now we're going to come to what is the result? What is the result of Hashem putting in us that light? The result of that is a deep faith, a deep instinct of faith, a deep connection with Hashem. Because in us we have the light of Hashem. It's like we have in us part of Hashem. We have Hashem, we have spiritual genes of Hashem are implanted in us that empowers us to do what it has to be done to make this world a better place. But it starts with the connection. And that is the source of faith. And even simple people, unlearned people, also believe in Hashem. So where is that belief in Hashem that comes to people that are not learned? Women who in those days didn't study or simpletons who didn't study. Where do they get their deep faith in Hashem? So the Alter Rebbe says here that this faith is an instinct. Now he doesn't use the the, the English word instinct or the European it's a European word instinct in Russia Russian it's instinct it's a, it's a European it's a, a word but there's a letter from the previous Rebbe where he writes that our faith is an instinct and we understand those words of the previous Rebbe from what he says over here because what he says over here that Hashem implanted in us the light of the Ein Saf, because our nisha, our first of all our neshama comes from the from Hashem, and in the highest level of the neshama he implanted the light of the Ein Saf, and that is where we get our faith, because ultimately. We, uh, our neshama senses Hashem with that light. Because faith, amuna, and we're talking about the real essence of our faith is this connection with Hashem. The the uh, <coughs> Hasidus, the, the literature of Hasidus explains that the neshama, this level of neshama, the essence of our neshama, which is in our subconscious, our subconscious, that essence is always connected with Hashem, and like. Instinct, it, it senses Hashem. And in fact, it senses Hashem similarly to a humans experience something through seeing it. When we see something, we know it's real. If you hear about something, you hear it. So one per, two people hear the same story or the same description 
from one person who's telling two other people a description of something or a happening. And in two people, it could be seen differently. One says, well, I imagined it like this. And the other one says, I imagined it like that. And if both of them would be artists and they'd have to draw it, they could be drawing a different picture. But if they both saw what happened, then this is what it is. It's, it's clarity. So when we're talking about light, is to experience something through seeing it. And that is the light of Seichel. An example that's given is, for example, if someone wasn't, let's say, upstairs in the shul, and they would be blindfolded and brought into the building and brought into the, the shul upstairs, and it's completely dark. And we would tell the person, Un, they, we unfold him, <laughs> we, we undo the blindfold, it's totally dark. Tell us what kind of a room it is, tell us how big this room is, and describe the room. So, he's going to walk around, first on the walls, he'll count the feet it takes to go from one side to the other, in the, in the length, in the width. Then he's going to find the benches, the pews. He'll find the bima in the middle. He'll touch the bima. He's going to figure out soon this is a shul. Maybe he'll feel some of the sedurim, the chamashim that are in the pews. He'll go up to the aron kaidish. He'll figure out it's a shul. He'll also figure out how big it is. How long, how wide. But it's going to take him some time to figure this out. So it's, till he figures out it's a shul, to the size of it, how, how many people more or less does it see, it's going to take him time. Why? Because he's in the dark. But if you would suddenly open the light, as soon as it comes in, you open the light, and he said, where are you? Oh, it's a shul. How big is the shul? Yeah. He closed his eyes and make an estimate how big the shul is. And with one vision, he sees the pews, he sees the benches, he sees the Aram Kodesh, he sees the whole thing, and he knows what color is. He has much more information. Because oh, what happened? Nothing happened. Just the light went on. What did the light, what did the light do to the shul? Nothing. What did the light do? The light went on. Wisdom is a light. And when you see wisdom, you're not in darkness. The neshama has a light that it senses Hashem. Now we, who are down in, this, in, a, in a physical body, and we're not in tune with our neshama, and most of us are not in tune, certainly, with the higher level of the neshama, the prines chokhma, which you have to really be at tzaddik to be in tune with that level. So we're not in tune with that high level of awareness of Hashem, of seeing godliness, of seeing the truth that the neshama sees. But the neshama is not in darkness, it's in light. And it sees, and it's aware. And it's connected, like an instinct, to Hashem. And that's the source of our faith. The source of Ramuna is that deep connection. Now, Chassidus is telling us something very deep over here about Amuna. Now we all know you have to have faith in Hashem. In fact, in fact it's one of the mitzvahs. The Rambam counts it as the first mitzvah to believe in Hashem. 
he starts his work on halacha, the Yad HaChazaka, Yisoyed HaYisoyed is Vamud HaChachmas, the foundation of it all is to know that there is one being that's before all other beings and from which all other exist beings and all of existence comes from. That is the foundation of it all. Now, there's two ways of looking at faith, at Amuna. Amuna is the Hebrew word for faith. There's two ways of looking at it. One way is that it's, it's not the strongest point of our religion. Some argue that things that I study, that I see, that I know, I know. What I can't understand, I rely on, on faith. So in other words, what am I working on the front burner? I'm working with what I understand, my intellect. And whatever, I don't understand. I say, well, listen, I'm supposed to believe. It's a mitzvah to believe, so I believe. I don't understand it, so I don't understand. I don't have to understand. Hashem is higher than my understanding. I don't have to understand. So I, 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 over there, I go back to my belief. According to this, a stronger connection would be through intellect, and a weaker connection would be through belief through faith, through Amuna. And it is a mitzvah, there is a mitzvah to work on our understanding. And there is a mitzvah to try to understand uh, about the existence of Hashem and about uh, how Hashem's presence is in nature. The more we understand through nature or through through. Uh, Jewish philosophy or through Hasidus, the more we understand about Hashem, it's a mitzvah of Yediyas Hashem. But what, where does faith come in? Where does Amunah? So sometimes you hear say, well, what I can't understand, I believe. As if understanding of Hashem is stronger, makes a stronger connection than believing, than Amunah. The Hasidish view is different. And you see it over here and in the next lines. The Hasidic view is that the source of faith is not because you can't understand, so you rely on our faith. But really, the strongest connection that we have, Hashem, is faith. Because it's an instinct. It's a connection that is because Hashem's light in is, is in us. It is because our nefesh comes from, from Hashem, from the Esospheres. And in there, the highest level is enclosed a light of Hashem. So we have, as far as our subconscious is concerned, a deep connection with Hashem that comes from our neshama. That's the neshama connection. And that has no limits. And it's an essence. And it's an experience that is even stronger than vision in the, in the human experience. The neshama has no doubts because the neshama is not in darkness. The neshama doesn't have to touch around and find proofs for Hashem. The neshama senses Hashem and is aware of Hashem because it's in the presence of Hashem because it has the light of Hashem in it. And therefore, that is a stronger connection with Hashem. What is stronger? Something that is in us by instinct or something that we developed intellectually? Something that we developed intellectually, the more the person is intellectual, it's stronger in him. But even the best intellectual, you'll ask him a question, and he'll say, oh, you know, I've got to think about that. And that moment he has a question that I have to think about that. So his, he put a question mark on 
what he thought before was an axiom and was a certainty in it, and there was nothing to argue about. But an instinct is an instinct. You can't argue about an instinct. Let's debate that instinct you have. It's an instinct. It's inner programming. And we'll soon see why it has to be that way. But what I want to add at this point is something that I found very interesting. I found very interesting that he starts with Chochmah, which is intellectual, right? It's understanding, it's, it's the light of wisdom. He starts with Chochmah, and from there becomes faith. That's an instinct. And finally, that is the source of a hidden love that the Neshama has for Hashem, an uncompromising love for Hashem that a Yid will give up his life for Hashem. So how do you get from an idea to a feeling of love? So I was wondering about that. And what, and what I think comes about, out of this is as follows. Some ideas that we understand are just ideas and I have it in my head and it doesn't shape me it's just in the head that's why he said that this light that's in the Chachmah he mentioned in the, in, in, in the previous section that it permeates him the slide permeates him completely. Because it's not just what we call intellectual, which we can compartmentalize in the dimension of the intellect and separate it from the dimension of an emotion. This level of Chochmah, this light which is in us, becomes part of our being. It's called intellect because it's an awareness. But it's an awareness in, 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 in human intellect, awareness in the mind. Does I, I'm aware in the mind, but I feel, but I'm not in the mood of acting out on it. It's an awareness that is, doesn't shape my being. But this awareness of the, of, the, of the light of Hashem that's in him shapes his being and therefore his being is connected to this awareness. And it shapes his being in, in a way that he cannot disconnect from Hashem and he has a love for Hashem because of this awareness. It's a total experience that touches his intellect and his feelings and his whole personality in a connection that is that cannot be questioned that is with certainty and with a clarity that comes from this godly light that's in him so because Amun is higher than understanding. And he's going to bring a verse. Um, he's going to bring a verse for Mishlei where is going to be emphasized how precisely because it, 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 it's beyond our understanding it's much stronger. So the verse says that the fool believes and is the, the, the shrewd one or the sly one, he understands. The Aram, the really the smart guy, he understands. So it would seem that the fool believes but wait a minute. 
the fool believes is that because the fool is lesser that's what it sounds like but we're going to see that the fool perhaps is onto something more powerful than the intellectual because we're saying the fool believes but belief comes from a place that's deeper than our understanding so that's what it means the fool believes why because Hashem is beyond our understanding how do we connect with Hashem if our connection is an intellectual connection it's based only on intellect so then it's limited it's limited as to how much you understand so today you understand more so you 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 understand your connection is more and in a year your connection is even more when you have a bad day or you have a new question then this may shake up your connection with Hashem but our connection with Hashem should be consistent and always and we shouldn't doubt Hashem it's a mitzvah and mainly because Hashem is beyond our understanding Hashem is not someone who's defined by the intellect they say in the name of the Kutzker who said to one of his followers who had a bunch of questions so he said a God who you understand is not God because Hashem is not just superhuman some people think what is God he's a grandfather what is God he's Superman he's big so he's everywhere and he's intelligent more intelligent than all humanity together but they're giving Hashem a human form and dimension and the Rambam says that's not the way it is he's of a completely different dimension a dimension that cannot be grasped by the intellect so if you're going to put on him human qualities you're not doing justice to him so therefore Hasidus says the source of our connection comes from the Nishama which is an instinct connection from the godliness that's in us that has no limits that can connect to Hashem's godliness which is Ein Saf if there's a little of the light of the ain't self of the infinite in us if our neshama has in it so to say infinite type of instincts that are godly so then our connection is not defined by whether we understand more or we understand less it's an unconditional connection a connection is based on the intellect is a conditional connection the more I understand the more I'm connected when I understand and if I understand I'm connected if not I'm not connected but our Yiddishkeit cannot be based only our intellect granted many of us are intellectuals and they really have to understand everything that they experience and if they don't understand it disturbs them so that's why Hashem gave us the Torah as wisdom and he gave us teachers of Torah that explain things and from the beginning from Matan Torah Torah was presented it's wisdom it's understanding and the Jewish people are intellectual people even in the eyes of the Goyim they understand that we are people of the book 
and therefore we have a special quality and a history of understanding and developing uh, intellect, our own personal intellect. So we need, we need to have that experience. And in fact, that's what Chassidus Chabad, why did the Alter Rebbe put these concepts of Kabbalah and of the Baal Shem Tev, put it in intellectual form and presentation is because the Alter Rebbe believed to really get people to relate to Yiddishkeit in a deeper way that's through learning Chabad Chassidus. But with all that, the Alt Rebbe is saying is, the fool sometimes has a deeper connection because he just has a simple faith. And some of you may have experienced people who have a very strong faith in Hashem that is beyond intellect, and there can be a stronger faith than the intellectual. Then you have a simple uh, person Oh, they daven when they daven it's with such sincerity. My mother used Allah Hashem used to daven with such sincerity. And she was not learning. There was no Beis Yaakov or Beis Rivka school in Munkach. And she learned in her home, Ivra. And she wasn't it, it didn't go so so fluently. But when she davened, she held a handkerchief. To feel that she had a handkerchief, it would cry. And I would watch her talking to Hashem like a child talks to their father. And I would say to them, I am a yeshiva bacher, and I'm studying Gemara, a chassidus, and the deepest studies, and the way she davens, simple neshama. And that's what he's saying over here. Before Hashem, we're all like fools. What we grasp is just a presentation of Hashem that's limited. That's what we grasp through our study. If we grasp it in human intellect, that is part of Hashem. It's not Hashem's wisdom, but it's a limited form. But when, you have, when you're going into the pure faith, the emunah that's in the essence of the neshama, soul to soul, instinct, connection, it's not limited. There's a verse in Tehillim where Dov Damelech says, and here's, here's really the Hasidic origin to this approach. He says, Vani I am like a fool. I don't know. I'm a fool. He's talking to Hashem. I'm like a fool. I don't know anything. I'm like a behema. I'm like, like a cow in front of you. I'm always with you. After he says, I'm like, I am a fool. And I, I'm like a cow. What does a cow understand? It's a dumb cow. So the Alter Rebbe says, Kloimer, what does this mean to say? Shabazesh ani baru behema. David the was saying to Hashem, precisely because I recognize my limitations, that before you I'm a fool and like an animal, my grasp in you is like the cow. Why did he say that? And I need Tom and And that's why I'm always with you. What does it mean always? Unconditionally with you. If David Amalek, who was a great Torah scholar, the Gemara says. So there the Torah scholar, David as the personality of the Torah scholar. That's not why I'm always with you. Sometimes you understand deeper. One time you learn the Gemara, you understand it one way. Then you learn it a couple of years later, the same Gemara, you understand it deeper. And Gemara is Hashem's wisdom. So it's a deeper, it's a deeper understanding and a deeper connection with Hashem. Like the Arizal says, if someone has questions in his studies, that means that's klipa, it's, 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 it's 
that allow him to connect to Hashem. So he has to answer all his questions. So if he has all his questions, he's now connected to Hashem in a deeper way. And what does David HaMelech say? That's not my the ultimate connection. When I recognize that I'm in front of you like a fool, why? Because I understand you cannot be grasped. That the, to connect with the essence of Hashem is a deep neshama connection. That's like an instinct. And that's why I'm unconditionally with you. And itamid imach. And now, the Alter Rebbe comes to a very powerful conclu conclusion. Summation. Conclusion, actually. This instinct is in every Yid. Even a Yid who is simple and, edu and educated. Because it's a connection that's not based on the intellect. On the contrary, it's, sim it's a connection that comes from the Shama. That explains a phenomena that was observed, and the Alter Rebbe says it over here, that you find Jews, Yidin, who sacrifice their life for their, for, for their God, for Hashem. What kind of Yidin? Not necessarily scholars. Not necessarily intellect, intellectuals. Even in this, they weren't even learned. So if they're not learned, and they didn't study, who lit the fire in their, in their being to be ready to give up their life for Hashem? How, how did they bring themselves to give up their life to Hashem? And the answer is, because the connection, our connection to Hashem is planted in this because of our neshama, and there's an awareness of Hashem, the Amuna. That's an awareness of Hashem that comes from the godly light that's in us. And from the fact that we are from, from Hashem, a part of Hashem Himself. Even Jews, Yidden, who take the Yiddishkeit very lightly. And sinners. And sinners. We found even those people gave up their life, sacrificed their life to sanctify Hashem's name in the majority of cases. And they would suffer pain and torture not to deny Hashem. So where does this come from then? If it's someone who's a scholar and he spent all his years steeped in Yiddishkeit through study and understanding, so we can understand it. But a simple Yid who, who is ignorant and even a sinner, where does it come to a sinner? He's not learning, he doesn't care about Yiddishkeit. Where does a Yid, a sinner, come? to go from the extreme that he's a sinner, and then when he's put to a test, they wouldn't give up, they, 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 would, they would give up their life for Yiddishkeit. And these are people who are ignorant and do not know about the greatness of Hashem. And even the little that they, they do know, they're not thinking, making big calculations or thinking. What moves a, a Yid to be ready to sacrifice his, his life for Hashem? What moves him? So al says it's not because at that moment he's making a study and a, a, and a meditation and he's calculating why he should give up his life for Hashem. It's not because of that. It's an instinct. This Yid gives up his life without understanding and deep thought. Because 
In him it's as if I just can't do it. I can't be a traitor to my God and to my religion. I can't do it. I, he feels he can't bring himself to disconnect with Hashem in this way. So where does that come from? It is not from understanding, it's not from knowledge, it's not from education. Where does it come from? So he explains, that is because Hashem Himself, the one Hashem in all His unity, shines and sustains the nefesh, it sustains the soul in the level of Chokhma. And that's because that place where they are touched, when they are tested, if you're a Jew or not, that in that that's the place where it, in it shines the light of Hashem. And that awareness of Hashem that's in the Chokhmah, in the Prinas Chokhmah, shines in everybody. And it's not there because of her personal development. And it's not there because he studied more Torah or less Torah. It's in there and it's like an instinct. And that is the source of the unconditional love that's in our neshama. And that doesn't allow him to break his connection to Hashem. The instinct, the love for Hashem that's in him as an instinct, that's the Ava Musateris. That is the same love for which he is ready to sacrifice his life for Hashem. Without deep contemplation and so on. And you see this also today, from time to time, in, a, in, 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 in situations. You know, I, I have conversations with people and if you tell him, and don't do this, but I've seen conversations with people and I'm watching one person who tells the other person, you know, you're a guy. So, oh, you can call me anything, but I'm not a guy. You'll find people who will, who will, who don't keep much of the mitzvahs, but they still consider themselves a yid, and a very strong and a proud yid. And when their Yiddish guy is touched, where you're questioning that they're a Jew, they'll get very upset. Sometimes it's in situations which I've seen. Uh, a child comes home with a non-Jewish boy or girl and the father or the mother are very upset and they're giving this child a big argument and the son of the daughter says what do you mean we never go to Shul we don't even go to Shulayim Kippur what are you so upset about we don't care about being Jewish but suddenly the, mo the mother or the father said, what do you mean we don't care about being Jewish? But we don't. Yes, but you can't marry a, a, a guy. You can't marry a, a, a guy. What happened? Let's analyze this psychologically. They didn't come to showing him Kippur, but they still consider themselves Jewish. And therefore, when they came to a test where their children are telling them, yeah, but we're not Jewish. We don't care about being Jewish. When it came to that test, when the children are telling him, you know, but we're not Jews, that means he's a failure and that he's being seen as not Jewish. He can't handle that. You have it in situations, um, you know, they were after World War II. In 1948, when the, when the, it was the War of Independence. So the odds for um, 
the Jew, the Yidin in Eretz Yisrael to survive that war in 1948 that all of the Arab countries um, started because they declared themselves a state. So they, they were very desperate. They smuggled a few planes into the Holy Land, Eretz Yisrael, but they needed experienced pilots. So they found, going from name to name, a list of World War II veterans, Jewish World War II veterans. And they asked them to come to Eitz Yisrael to fly those planes. There's actually a video on, online about it. And some of these people, one was in Arkansas, one was <laughs> somewhere else, in places with very Jewish, very little Jewish life. And in an interview, I'm listening to these people say, really, I was tired after World War II. Some of my colleagues, flyers, they didn't make it. You know, and from his squadron, so many made it. Someone didn't make it. And I'm finally back home, and then my people call me. They need me. And he says, some of them, you'll, you'll see that those interviews, they say, you know, I was never connected to synagogue. I wasn't brought up that way. And I don't know. But when they came to me and they said, they need me, I felt my people need me. And something in me said, I have to go. And there were several I don't know about, but they, they were the ones who were flying the planes. They didn't know how to daven. They didn't know how to make a bracha. They didn't have a bar mitzvah. What touched them? So that's the neshama. They did something. It's not because they studied or they read or they had no connection with Jewish life. But that's what the Alter Rebbe is saying over here, there is a subconscious love, which is an instinct, that we have an unconditional connection to Hashem, that's deep inside of us, and that's a godly light, a godly light, the Oyin Hashem, that is in us. And that awareness and connection is unconditional. And from time to time we can tune into it and it's sometimes in moments of great tests and personal situations they come to the fore and really the goal of Hasidus is and, Jewish, and mitzvahs is to tune into that as much as possible through normal and the regular schedule of Torah mitzvahs good night